Hey everybody and hope you're doing well. This week we're going to talk about note taking and study strategies which are of course essential for you to be successful in college. First thing I want to do is talk about note taking. So one of the methods that I always suggest to students is using Cornell notes and hopefully you've maybe seen this before. Cornell notes involves you dividing your paper into four sections. At the top you put the topic that you're discussing that day in class. Um, in section three is where you actually take the notes. And then over here on the left is where you either write questions or you put main ideas on what those notes are talking about. And then at the bottom is one that I really like. I tell students, if using this method after the class is over, you wanna go down at the bottom and basically summarize what that page or what those notes are talking about. Use the STAR method when you're taking notes. So the first thing you want to do is set up your page. And again, if you're using Cornell Notes, you can set it up this way. You want to take notes. You want to actively listen, analyze, and ask questions. And then you, the part that I think a lot of students miss is the reviewing over your notes after you've taken them. You want to look over them, highlight, edit your notes. I was a big fan of rewriting my notes after I'd taken them, and that's another way you can study. This is just an example of Cornell notes. I particularly like it in math. So notice what the student here is. She takes notes as she goes and then over here on the left hand side, um, what they've done is they've either write definitions or notice some of the times that she wrote a question. And then down here at the bottom is where you put your summary on what you learned that day. This is an example of a person who um, took notes in an English class. It's the same concept. You take your notes in the middle you can either write questions or main ideas over on the left, and then your summary is at the bottom. Another way that some students like to take notes is using mind mapping. So you've probably done, these, done this before, um, but mind mapping is a great tool for visual learners because it really benefits them when they go back to study. And so in the middle, of course, you write your main topic, and then you just branch out as you go. So here's an example of somebody who did one in a physics class. So they put proteins in the middle, which was their main idea, or excuse me, it looks like a biology class. They put proteins in the middle and then they, they branched out with the functions of proteins, the structures, the diet, and the disorders. And then you just keep going from there. Like I said, for somebody who's visual, this can be very beneficial to study. For somebody who's not, this might be a little overwhelming. So instead, for that type of person, if mind mapping is overwhelming, you can just use outlining. Um, outlining is a great tool again to organize notes. Of course, you put your main topics first and then you just indent as you go. Highlighting is something I would suggest students doing after you've taken notes. Um, highlighting sometimes can get students in trouble because they tend to highlight everything. You only want to highlight those main ideas or if you had something like formulas or dates that you needed to stand out on the paper. I like how this student here, um, what they did was over here on the left hand side, they color coded their highlighting. So they know when they take notes that green is a date, yellow is an example, um, blue is the vocabulary, pink is a person, and then orange is a subtitle. Again though, if you do use highlighting, you wanna be careful that you're not over highlighting. At the same time, you wanna make sure you're not under highlighting either, because sometimes when you go back to review, you only focus on the topics that you've highlighted. Make sure that you invest in your note taking. So sometimes I, stu I feel like students don't take note taking very seriously, whereas note taking is probably the number one way that you can go about studying for an exam. Investing in note taking means making it important to you. Honestly, when I am writing with a pilot pen, I pay more attention and my handwriting's better when I'm just uh, digging at the bottom of my pocketbook to just find a pen. So find a pen that works for you, one that you're comfortable with, one that um, makes improves your handwriting. Um, it'll just make note taking more enjoyable. You want to decide how you want to take notes. Do you want to take them in a binder or do you want to take them in a notebook? A binder definitely has the benefit of being able to put um, like worksheets and handouts in there, but at the same time students tend to lose paper in a binder. Whereas something like a math class, maybe you want to invest in a notebook to keep everything together. I would really suggest keeping your notebook separately for classes. So sometimes I'll ask student, you know, let's look at qu the quiz from last week and they'll open up their notebook and they can't find it because they've put all of their classes in the same exact notebook. Consider a template. So maybe you're just not good at, you know, drawing those lines for the Cornell notes before you begin. 
Um, Word, Microsoft Word has a Cornell Notes template that you can download and you can print however many of them that you want and you could put them inside of a binder and that way that part of it's kind of already done for you. You just have to fill out the actual notes. Also, if you go on Amazon, they actually sell notebooks that are already broken apart um, in the Cornell Notes style. So you could just buy a Cornell Notes notebook and that way, again, you don't have to worry about um, dividing your paper up. Now that we've talked a little bit about note taking, let's talk about some study tips that can get you ready to take exams. So tip number one is chunk, don't cram. So if we had, for example, five chapters that we needed to study, we're not going to try to study all five chapters at the same time. We're going to chunk it into more reasonable um, sections. So you just study that like one section at a time. Kind of going along with that is starting early. Since you can't study all ch five chapters at one time, if you study, start studying several days before the exam, um, that will prevent you from having to cram so much information right before the exam. Step three is to stay, or tip number three is to stay positive. So if you kind of, if you build yourself up, if you keep telling yourself that you can do it, you're more apt to be successful on an exam. The next tip is to definitely set priorities. So the things that were the hardest for you, that's where you want to focus your attention. Um, things that were easier for you, maybe you can spend less time on. Make study sheets or cue cards. That's very good or a very good tip for our visual learners. So if you can make things like flashcards, if you can highlight, um, study making your own study guides, that helps too. If you have a review class, make sure that you go to it. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're asking questions that you can bring to the class um, that your teacher can go over with you. Minimize distractions. So we all have our cell phones out. We have our apps, our games, our social media apps. If you can put that aside while you're studying, the better. Um, and then finally, get help. So, you know, we have academic support here. Also, your teachers or your instructors are there to help you as well. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Making a schedule is something that is very important when you're getting ready to study for an exam. So, I tell my students to use the five-day test prep plan, and that's actually what you're going to be doing this week as your assignment is coming up with one of these. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to show you an example in just a minute. Some strategies that you can use. I've given you some prep strategies over there on the left-hand side, and then also some review strategies. Again, though, this will be part of your assignment for this week, and I'll actually give you this list in your assignment. So a lot of times students will ask me, how do I study for math and science? Because it's different than just memorizing dates or memorizing facts. Math and science is kind of one of those subjects you actually have to do versus memorize. So I really suggest students, even when you're not preparing for an exam, still do practice problems every day. Even if you've completed your homework, you're done with it, Continue to do practice problems. Ask your instructor for more practice problems. Use the practice problems in the back of the book. Um, take your old test. Create new problems from them. Um, the more you practice, the better. Definitely keep a notebook of all the problems that you've either done in class or done at home. Writing the steps to the problem is essential. So if you're not taking notes in your math or science class, you got to start doing it because it's not going to help you at all if you don't have the steps to how you got the answer. It's not going to help you study. For preparing for a test, you want to quickly um, review your notes to determine what problems have been emphasized. So if your teacher's giving you the same problem over and over and over in class, then it's probably going to be that same problem on your test. You want to look over your notes, maybe make a concept list or make a list of formulas that you know is going to be covered. Going and reworking homework problems is probably the best way to study for a test. Reworking homework problems, reworking quiz problems. You can notice some similarities and differences among the problems. Again, if you see problems being repeated over and over on your homework, they're probably going to be on the test. Locate additional problems. If you have them in the back of your book, that's probably a good way. Or a lot of math books will have a chapter summary at the end of each chapter. And then important thing is to test yourself under conditions that are realistic as possible. So for example, I know a lot of you in your math class probably use My Math Lab and it has this tool called Help Me Solve This that walks you through the problem. If you're using that while you're studying for your test, you're not setting yourself up 
for a realistic condition of what the test is going to be like. Or if you're using like an app on your phone to solve the problem, you're not going to have that on test day. So it's really not helping you at all when it comes to studying for your test. When it comes to the actual test taking, glance over the exam quickly and kind of determine where you want to start. So sometimes instructors will, um, at the end of the test, maybe they'll have a problem that's worth 10 points, whereas like your multiple choice problems were worth two points. You want to spend as much time as you can on the problems that are going to cost you the more points. Also, you want to start find a starting place that's easiest for you. So you read problem number one, you panic because you didn't study that. Skip it, move on, find a problem that you're going to be successful, and that'll set you up for success on the test. If you have an instructor that gives you partial credit, show your work. If you show your work, they're more apt to give you partial credit than just putting an answer on your paper. If you have a lapse of memory on a problem, again, you want to skip it. You don't want to spend 20 or 30 minutes on one problem, and then by the time you look up at the clock, it's time for the test to be over. When you get a test back, don't just throw it to the side and forget about it. Um, if your class has a final exam, you want to be able to take those tests and kind of put them together and kind of see where you went wrong. When you get your very first test back in a class, you can look over it and say, okay, where do these questions come from? Are they pulling questions similar from in class, from the textbook, or from your homework? You can say to yourself, well, how are these problems different from my notes, text, or homework? Or maybe did I make a mistake in my notes that I've caught on my test? Where was your greatest source of error? Were you just rushing through the test? Did you not understand it? Did you not know what method to choose? And then what can you do differently for the future for future tests? When in doubt, ask for help. This is one of my pet peeves and I am a math instructor. So when students don't ask for help and then they get to the end of the semester and they're like, well, I didn't understand anything that was going on. Well, if you don't ask for help, then instructors don't know what it is that you're having issues with. If your instructor isn't able to help you or like you're not understanding the information from your instructor, then you want to find somebody that can explain it to you better, whether that be a classmate or whether you need to go to academic support and get one of their tutors. If one of their tutors isn't working for you, then maybe you need to hire a tutor outside of what is offered here at the college. I did want to go over you with you real quick. Um, your assignment that you're going to be doing for this week. So this week you're actually going to create a five-day study plan. It can be about whatever test that maybe you have coming up. Maybe it's a chapter test, maybe it's a final exam, maybe it's a midterm, whatever the case may be. So if you have any type of test or it could be a quiz coming up, you're going to make a five-day study plan for that. At the top, so this is an example of one for my Math 110 class, so my students do have a final exam. At the top you have section A, B, C, and D. What it is, is it's taking what you're studying and breaking it apart into four different sections. I would strongly suggest the first part being the earliest section. So maybe if it's a chapter test, this would be section one, maybe B would be section two, maybe C would be section three, and so forth. So these are just the chapters that they have on their final exam. And then up here at the top, you're going to put what five days you plan to study. So maybe this person has an exam the following Monday, so they start the, the previous Wednesday. How this works is you prepare for part A first. So in this case, the person would prepare for chapter one. I've given you some suggestions on the assignment of ways that you can prepare to study. So in this case, I said develop a study guide, make a formula sheet, create a practice test, all from that chapter. What you do is you go for day two, I'm gonna prepare for part B, which was chapter four, but all the while I'm gonna go back and review from the day before. So notice you just keep adding as you go. You spend a little less time. So notice part A goes from two hours, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and then finally 10 minutes. So it drops off as you go, but all the while you're still going back and reviewing previous information. This has been proven to be the best way to study rather than trying to cram everything in to one day. It's just breaking it apart day by day so you're studying a little as a, a little at a time. I did on the actual assignment, so this is the assignment itself, give you a list of pre preparation and review strategies. You may think of things outside of this list and that's completely fine. Like I said, your five day study plan probably isn't going to look exactly like mine, um, but as long as it includes, like I said, five days of preparation and review strategies, hopefully it's something that you will find helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know.